Okay, so I've got those back legs in. I've kind of merged the different pieces together. I can make a new group of the, the back legs. But now I want to take that back leg and I need to darken it. So I made a duplicate of just that back foot. And I want to just use levels so I can control how dark it gets. That's a little bit better in this case than using a dodge and burn. So it lets me darken the foot, but it also lets me go to adjustments and saturation and take down some of the color. It's like using the sponge tool, right? That looks a little bit more believable. And then I'm missing uh, a tail, of course. And I'm seeing that the belly here is a little bright, so I can burn that. And maybe it's a little colorful as well, so I can sponge that with desaturate turned on. And then I see that that little patch of the chest and arms from the lion is a little too colorful. So I can sponge that and burn it. So seeing it all together, you'll see kind of the lighting challenges. And I still have a lot of components that I can use to help bring these elements together, but I've got the rough components now. I've got them organized in a way that I can access them. Okay. Let's see this back foot. Burn that down a little too. And then maybe sponge it. So it's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to add in my last little component, which might be a tail, and I might even decide I don't need it, right? And I, I had this plan as a tail, and I can try it. It might be a little silly now, the way things have gone. But I think it's such an interesting shape. Go ahead and flip it horizontally, rotate it. And just reminding you how composites work. I'm going to rough cut it out by selecting around it and then Command J duplicating and getting rid of the smart object layer by deleting the smart object layer. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to play with its color and its lighting. Ooh, why are you doing this? There we go. So levels. Hmm, I actually think I need to flip it because the lighting is opposite the way it should be. And then, let's see. Huh. Because it's lit from the bottom. I do not want that. How can I change that? Make it like this and then flip it vertical. There we go. So the lighting's on top. Okay. So let's work with that lighting and coloring. Start with levels. Really just want to limit the highlights a little. And then color balance. Really give it a lot more warmth. There we go. Just cool the shadows down and warm up the highlights slightly. Let's see if I can select around it. Did a pretty good job. With that two pixel feather. Nice. 
hold down shift and get all of these. Okay, now I can play with shaping it. <laughs> I'm so silly. And as design, this is kind of just a, a nothing tail. Kind of a blunt little thing, and I might put our obsidian on it or something in the next stage. All right now I'm gonna let's see, maybe burn it a little bit. Now that I have it placed. A little bit darker on the bottom. Yeah. Why not? All right. So this is my creature thus far. Now that I have, uh, I'm using dodge and burn. I want to go to different, different layers. Have it auto select by layer, and see where I can burn it in general. It's a bit of a pain because I have to pick the individual components, but I'm looking at the overall lighting now. I definitely have more than five different elements, so I'm meeting the requirements. And then I can also use dodge on these elements to kind of create uniform lighting across the different features. So you don't want to overdo it. Bring a little bit more light to the middle here. And if I can't brighten these feathers a little bit, I'm going to have to erase away from them. That green is too strong. And then I can use burn. And it shows me some of the holes in my composites, like where the seams need to be a little bit better. And I've got all the green back here on the back end. If I select the empty space, it will show it all to me. And then I simply use my lasso hold down shift. Actually, I can just click shift and it will remember. And I can group a lot of this noise in in order to erase it. If you don't know where what layer some debris is on, you can use the move tool with auto select layer and click it. Then you know where you're on the layer and then you can delete from it. That's very handy. And now we're doing a little bit of that refining, knowing the components we want. But we haven't done any of like the final paint job or the 
the sanding, the finished detail work, which we'll do at the beginning of next class. Once we have all these major components bolted together and we're happy with them, then we can work it all as one creature. We're going to use a tool called um, Clone Stamp to play with the textures, bring textures around and fill in through. Like down here, I need some work with that. See if we have any more green stuff to get rid of. A little bit. It's the problem with over relying on magic wand is it will leave a lot of little fine detail work you have to clean up later. I'm actually zoomed in at 400% right now. So this is a little more precise than I need to worry about. I'm not going to see see that necessarily in the print. Okay. So is there anything about it I just don't like, I'm not satisfied with? I don't love that the, the back feet are so plain and ordinary. Is there an easy way to work with that? Um, maybe, not sure yet. I can look at the reference I didn't use for the forearms. Like I didn't use the mole at all. So I might be able to do that. Let's try that quick. Doesn't take much to make something unique. And that mole reference is certainly large enough. So if I just grab the one that's really in focus, do a rough cut around it, duplicate that, get rid of the smart layer. Yeah, this will make for better feet. And then I'll have all my major components. So this is one where I just might go with a 100% eraser, make it a little bit harder, and then just integrate it right in. Because I know I have a perfectly good foot underneath it. Now I'm just trying to change the shape a little bit, the profile. And once I got rid of those hard edges, and I can go to a lower opacity and start transitioning. That will work for now. Now for the back foot, I duplicate it. I'm going to flip it horizontal. Nope, I'm not going to. It's not going to work for this. Scale it, warp it, change it. Luckily, I don't see all that much of it. <laughs> and definitely darken it a little bit with levels. Especially take its highlights down, because it's the back foot. And then erase away. 100% opacity. Now, how best to clean up, because this is what we'll be doing beginning of next class, refining the outside edge once everything's